Hi everyone, welcome to Life Made Simple. Today I'm going to be changing the front brake pads and rotors on this 2005 Acura TL. I've had these on here for over 100,000 kilometers and approximately nine years they've served us really well, but we're starting to get vibration at high speed, so it's time to swap these out. Feel free to hit that like button to let me know if this video is helpful. Subscribe so that you are informed of all our latest DIY and tool review videos. Now let's get started on that brake replacement. After safely raising and securing your vehicle, you're going to first remove the two caliper guide bolts. Those are 14 millimeter bolts. I'm using the Milwaukee Stubby 3 8 impact wrench for that. After that, we remove the caliper and we're going to secure it from the strut with a bungee cord. And then just set it nicely out of the way so it's hanging on the bungee cord and not off of the brake line. Remove the brake pads. I tend to look at stuff just before I put it away. The squealer is going to go on the top inside and I noticed that. Take a look at the other one as well. It's good to pause a little bit as you're doing this so that you can just observe the parts you're replacing, the parts you're taking off and get a good sense for how they fit in there, what bolts you're supposed to be using. Uh, those things leave you clues and if we pay attention uh, it makes things a little bit easier to put back together later. So next I'm removing the caliper bracket. The caliper bracket has two 17 millimeter bolts that I'm using an impact wrench for IOB in this case to remove. So there goes the top one. Then I hold on to the caliper bracket while I remove the bottom one just so the caliper bracket doesn't fall off or hit the floor when I remove that second bolt. Okay, just set that aside for now. I'm gonna pause here because this rotor was super easy to remove because I had replaced the lower control arm on this side recently, and so I actually removed the rotor. On the other side, I had not removed the rotor recently, and so when I worked on that, it was a little bit more work. In hindsight, I should have recorded the driver's side, because what I needed to do on that side was first, there's two screws that hold the rotor in place that come from the factory. You spray those with penetrant spray, and then they're basically um, a size three Phillips. It's actually not, but it, it's really close. And I used uh, the Ryobi impact driver in order to remove those screws. And then after that, the rotor was still stuck to the wheel hub. So the rotor has a couple of holes that you can thread bolts through. So I threaded bolts through bit by bit, uh, one side, then the other one, one side, then the other one, until it basically cracked the rotor free from the wheel hub. Um, at first, I tried hammering, but actually, I decided the screw holes work better. So I did that. Uh, and then it separated and after that one hit with the hammer and the rotor came right off. If you have aftermarket rotors, they might not have those screw holes so you may end up needing just to hammer it until the rotor comes free. And by the way, if you do hammer the rotor, leave one of the lug nuts on just a few threads so that when you're hammering the rotor from the back and it breaks free, it doesn't come flying off and hit you in the face or flying off uh, onto your concrete floor. All right, this part of the video is called cleaning. Most exciting part of the video. Basically, I'm removing the um, clips. I'm spraying the caliper bracket. I'm gonna scrub it with a wire metal brush. And I'm basically just trying to get the corrosion off, trying to get the dirt, the brake dust, all that stuff off so it's as clean as can be. I'm gonna go through this in high speed because everybody wants to watch cleaning because that's obviously the most exciting part. So here's the other side of the caliper bracket, spraying, scrubbing, spraying, scrubbing. Pretty soon we're going to move on to power tools, so just bear with me for another three seconds. Okay, maybe, maybe ten. Okay, here I'm using the Ryobi impact driver with a quarter inch hex bit that has a 60 grit uh, coarse grind grinding pad on it. Now we're taking the caliper slide pins out. We're going to clean them off and we're going to clean the inside of those uh, pin holes as well. So for this I'm using brake clean and basically a metal wire brush. Clean off the caliper and clean off those guide pins. Yep, I'm cleaning again with superhuman speed to spare you from 
having to watch me clean all this stuff. Anyway, wipe off the guide pins. Get them nice and clean. More sanding going on here. Basically, I'm now cleaning the rust and corrosion off of the wheel hub. So when I put on the new rotor, uh, it's going to be as clean as possible. So again, I'm using the impact driver with the sanding pads. And I'm just going around the wheel hub as much as possible. And then I'm using this wire brush attachment so I can get a little bit closer to those wheel studs. You can see all the rust basically coming off. I've got a fan going in the background as well, trying to blow that rust away from me when it's coming off. And yeah, I'm just trying to clean up the surface as best as I can. Prevent it from seizing up too much later on. And here I'm just comparing the old rotor and the new rotor. The new one doesn't have those two holes. The, those two extra holes are for screws. So if you're trying to remove the caliper in the future, uh, you're going to be hammering it off if it's seized on there. You don't have those uh, bolt holes to work with. Okay, so at this point, I'm just mounting the rotor on backwards so I can give it a clean. I'm using brake clean, I'm going to wipe it down. When it comes from the factory, it comes with some oil on it to prevent corrosion while it's sitting in the box and sitting on a shelf. And so when you first get it, you just want to throw some brake clean at it and wipe that oil off. Now we're going to flip the rotor around to the other side, and same thing, we're going to throw brake clean at it, we're going to get a rag and wipe off that oil. This is optional, but I do have new screws to secure the rotor to the wheel hub. This is what happens from the factory. These are on there so that when it's on the assembly line, these rotors are not going to fall off the hub. But it's really the lug nuts that hold the wheel onto the rotor onto the hub. So this is really optional. Okay, now it's time to lube up those slider pins with high temperature silicon brake grease. And we're going to put these slider pins back into the caliper bracket after we've got them nicely greased up. The boot should snap back in place, just tidying it up a bit. And we want to make sure those slider pins are moving in and out freely. And then you're going to repeat the same process with the other slider pin. Now it's time to reinstall the caliper bracket that's nice and shiny clean. Well, not really, but cleaner than it was before. So you get the holes lined up. It only goes in one way. And I start off the bottom caliper bracket bolt by hand. Then start the upper one by hand. And then after that, I'll take an impact wrench and I'll just tighten it up initially. For this, I'll tighten them up with a torque wrench. 80 foot-pounds is my target. Time to install the new clips. Just putting a little bit of silicon grease on the clips just before I snap them into the caliper bracket. So there's the bottom one. And then also first, you can see it's a little bit uneven, and that'll cause me a problem later when I put in that uh, brake pad. I'll have to fiddle with it a bit.
So after I've got those clips in, I'm putting silicone grease onto the ears of the brake pads. And the whole point of this is to keep the brake pads moving freely, the caliper moving so that it prevents it from seizing up. Um, it allows them to push away from the rotor when the wheels are in motion, but also allows them to slide to grip the rotor when you apply the brakes. Now it's time to get the brake caliper ready to reinstall. So I'm going to put it up on top of the rotor here just to set it down there now that it's no longer being secured by the bungee cords. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the one of the old brake pads and just put it up against the caliper. Then I grab the brake caliper spreader tool, loosen it up so it fits in there, plop it in there, and then I'm just going to tighten it. So I'm tightening it and it's slowly pushing that piston back. Once it's back all the way, I won't be able to turn anymore. I'm going to remove the brake caliper spreader tool and that old brake pad. And I should have enough room now to basically put that back on the brake pads. I'm going to add a little bit of silicone grease onto the piston itself. And now we're going to reinstall the caliper. So you can push that in just a little bit if you need to get the uh, ears of the caliper back in. And then you want to start it off by hand. So I'm threading in the top bolt. And then after that, I'm going to thread in the bottom one as well. And then I just use my stubby impact wrench to secure them on. After that, I'm going to tighten them up fully with a torque wrench, and my target is 36 foot-pounds. After tightening up the caliper guide bolts, our front brake pad and rotor replacement is complete. Put the wheel back on, pull the brakes till the pedal stiffens before you start up the vehicle, and you should be good to go. If this was helpful, let me know by hitting that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to be notified of our latest DIY and tool review videos. Take care, everybody, and thanks for watching.